Let's continue talking about the reduce function, which is not only one of the most interesting functions, it is also one of my favorite functions. So it's a pleasure to discuss it. I've decided to focus on some examples so you get a better insight and you can build your intuition faster. Over the span of the next few videos, we will be discussing some applications of reduce which I hope will be more practical than just dealing with numbers, as it's usually the case when discussing this function, when you read on this on the, on the internet. Let's start with the first example, which will be about converting an array of objects into an object. So let's first define the problem. So here I have the array we used in the previous episodes. And I slightly changed each object by adding an ID. Beside the name and, and the born field, we now also have an ID. And the problem is that I would like to have an, an API for this object so I can easily find an object by ID. So if we take this structure, this variable right now, in order to, for example, find John Bentley, I would need to provide ID number eight, and I would need to iterate over this whole array, or at least up to this point where the record is, and compare if ID is equal to the one I, I gave as a parameter, which is relatively good, but it could be better. Because if we transform this data structure into a hash, into a map, we could have the constant access time which means that we could just type eight as a key and the value would be the whole record. So the idea is to convert this data, this shape of the people um, variable into a shape which will, which will allow us to have this constant time access. So let me show you in practice how it would look like. So this will be something of that sort. So now we have an array, as you can see, the square brackets with objects. And as a result, I want to have number one as a key for this record. And as a value, I want to have the whole record that already exists. So, and the same for the next one. So two, two, and this will be then serve, etc. Okay, and now if I just if I name this as people, let's say two, the idea is that I can now access it directly in a constant time because it's a map, it's a hash. So how we can transform this? So of course, this is about reduce, so we will use reduce. So let's call this new shape people by ID because I want to recombine this array into an object which where each object is associated, where each ID is associated with the corresponding object. So we will take the people, and of course we need to reuse reduce, and we will use a function by ID. And we will be working on an empty array as a starting point, as the initial value, because as a result, we want to have an object as well. So the only thing left, so let's display this, the only thing left is to define the function, the by ID function. And as you remember, this function will take always two parameters, the start, which is the memory of this for reduce, the accumulator, and the current value being treated. And now how we can transform this. So we need to return the whole object each time. So we will be constructing this object step by step. So for sure it will be an object which is returned. And at the same time we are passing an object as an initial value. So that's also an indicator that this is an object we are looking for. And we can say that we want what's already stored in the memory, in the accumulator. So what was already built, we don't really know what, what's built, but let's imagine that, but we can just imagine that something is already there and we want to take this current value, the previous one, and append 
the current one and how we would app append the current one. So we need to take the ID and we need to transform it into a field, the key for the hash. So we can use the square brackets and then we need to associate it with a value which is the same, which is the current object. And that's all. That's all you need to do. And if we run it, it should give us the, the shape we are looking for. So we have the ID and then the whole object. So if you are purist, you could remove, remove that ID from this because it's already here. But that's just a tiny detail and it's not worth wasting time on that. The goal is just to have this constant time. So the, the, this repetition is tiny compared to the advantage we are getting here. So let's improve slightly the shape of this function as well. So as I said, we can transform it into an implicit return. So we can remove the return. But because we are returning a hash, an object, so we have two uh, curly braces. So, so that JavaScript engine can understand it, we need to change the outer, the, the brackets on the outside to the normal parentheses. And this way it will work as before. So that's the first example. So this approach is pretty common in, uh, in practice or transforming an array into an object is pretty common. But by using reduce, it's very concise. And I would argue that much easier to understand and much easier to maintain than just um, an iterative approach that we could build using the common sense. And here, an interesting point is that this definition is somehow uh, declarative because we are saying here in the id by id function how the data structure looks and it's always the same it's just the after each element being iterated over but at any given point our uh, data structure has the same shape which is the what's been stored so far and the current element transformed that's all for today See you next time.